Packers fans, stay up to date on all of your Packers news this season via our newsletter. You can sign up for the PackersNews.com and more Journal Sentinel newsletters by clicking on the link in the brief field of this video. Fans. Welcome into the Green 19 podcast. I'm Cassidy Hill, joined by Tom Silverstein. Uh, Tom, I think we're a few days home now from the Combine, and things have not slowed down for the Green Bay Packers at all. Um, still awaiting news on, on what the future holds with Aaron Rodgers, and if it's going to be with the Green Bay Packers, if it's going to be with the New York Jets. We're going to get into all of that in the next few minutes here. Um, but let's just kind of start off with, with what we heard when we talked to Brian Gutekunst in Indianapolis, that was the first time we've spoken to the general manager since the end of the season. And Spoon, I know you and I both came away with sort of the same um, view of what he was saying and maybe even more importantly, what he wasn't saying. Yeah. But I'm going to let you kind of jump into that. And what were your biggest takeaways from that media session with Brian Gutekunst? Well, you know, going in, um, I was convinced that he wanted to move on from Aaron Rodgers and, you know, had reported he had told people that he wanted to move on. And so my only question was, how was he going to handle it? And I thought he handled it pretty deftly um, by making it clear there um, have made no decision. You know, he never said that they desperately want Aaron Rodgers back. He talked a lot about Jordan Love and about how he needs, you know, he just needs to play. And everything was so Jordan Love centric that, you know, you couldn't walk away from that going, oh boy, well, I guess Rodgers is coming back. I, I mean, it just confirmed exactly what, um, you know, I had been told and was starting to become less of a secret that they were moving on from from Rodgers. I think one of the most telling things he said was when he was asked if he had spoken to Rodgers and he said there's been some text communication, but nothing since the end of the season. And then he made sure to say twice that there's been constant communication with Jordan Love and his team. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was pretty eye-opening. Right. Um, and of course, there's a whole other debate about is, is Jordan Love ready to take over this team? Um, but none of that matters until we know what's going on with Aaron Rodgers. But sticking in Indianapolis here for a minute, while you were in Indianapolis, just kind of talking to different people, d- did you get a sense of how the rest of the league is treating this? Yes. I, I mean, in addition to people close to the Packers, um, every just about everybody I talked to at the Combine was like, uh, you know, it, when is this going to happen? You know, when are they going to trade them? It sure looks like the Jets are the number one team. You know, some of the scouts I knew who have some connections in Green Bay, either through um, having worked there or having um, being acquaintances of people who work there were like, you know, they kept hearing with conviction that Rodgers was going to be traded, that they were Packers were moving on. So I don't think, you know, when they had the combine, I don't think it was a secret. And looking back at it now, my guess is they've had already been talking to the Jets at some point, maybe the Raiders. Um, You know, I don't know who else, but that, you know, they were already thinking about moving on. And I also wonder whether they had already told Rodgers about it. I I just don't know. At some point, I think we'll find out when it is exactly they told them they want to move on. But um, that'll be interesting to know. But it sure seemed like that was the worst kept secret at the combine. Let me pose a question to you. If you're Aaron Rodgers and you wanted to come back to Green Bay and you wanted to finish your career in Green Bay, didn't want to be Brett Favre, and then you hear pretty, like, assuredly that the Packers want you to be gone. 
and it's still technically the ball is in your court, what do you do? Like if you're him and you, what you know of his mindset, like how do you take that? Well, first let me say if it were me, I'd be like, okay, I need to change the narrative. And actually that wouldn't be me. <laughs> but let me just, let me address this as how I think Aaron Rodgers would address it. I think he would say, I need to change this narrative because it's making it look like they're just kicking me out the door. And I want it to be that this is mutual and that I actually really didn't want to return. And I was going to retire, but, you know, the Jets sold me on coming back. And this is solely my decision, you know. I think that's why it's kind of dragging on or it's going to drag on where he's going to, you know, make people wait a little bit to make it seem like he's he's contemplating retirement. Mm. And so, you know, if you're retired, you know, in your mind, then I don't think you meet with the New York Jets. Right. I don't think you talk with them and meet with them. If you're retired in your mind, you're done. You know, you just, I've had it and this is it. So I, I, I think there's a lot of stuff that will move to um, push things the way he wants it in his narrative. And um once that happens, then I think they'll they'll come to an agreement on a deal and he'll be put in for the Jets or someone else if that falls apart. Let's talk about the New York Jets here for a minute then. And and we fully understand that anything we say could be, you know, different in four hours now. But it, there is a process that the Jets and Packers went through to get to this point. So let's focus on that. Um, the Jets received permission from the Packers to talk to Aaron Rodgers. We know that. They flew to California to meet with him. They had to receive permission from the Packers so as not to be considered tampering. Spoon, in layman's terms, how big of a deal is that, that the Packers gave permission to the Jets to talk to Rodgers? Mm, not, not that big a deal. I mean, it's pretty much expected because if he's going to go somewhere, if they're going to trade him, he's got to be able to be comfortable with it because, you know, if they traded him, he could just retire and that trade would be null and void or, or um, you know, the, whatever team tra trades for him, the picks are going to be conditional on him playing this year. Right. So um, I, I think that it's just a formality. And if something doesn't um, move forward with the Jets, I could see him going and, talking to the Raiders or the Dolphins or the Panthers or whatever happens. You never know. If the thing with the Jets falls apart, then he'll probably be give, given permission. I wouldn't be surprised if Gutekunst gave permission to his agent to talk to anybody they want. You know, they really? can come up with a deal. Fine. You know, <laughs> go for it. You know, but it's still in the Packers' hands in terms of the compensation. And so – it's it's a little bit delicate. I I think the Packers have done a good job of just shutting it down since the combine, like not telling anybody what's going on and and who they're talking to and what they're talking about. Um, they've pretty much shut it down, and and Rogers has too. So I think a lot of the stuff that is being reported might be coming from the Jets or. Um, but it's not coming from Rodgers, and I don't think it's coming from the Packers. If this happens, let's talk about the numbers for a minute. If this happens, what does that do with Rodgers' contract? How does that affect the Packers? Like, what did, what are they still on the hook for? Well, he'll if they trade him, he'll count forty million against the cap instead of thirty-one million. So they have to shave nine million off their cap. They're currently seventeen million under. Okay. Um, so they'd only have eight million, which is not enough for them to get through the season. So they'd have to make another move. Um, they can restructure David Bakhtiari and get about ten or twelve million more with that contract. And then they have some other options too. 
Um, they can cut some guys. They can trade some guys. Uh, there are options to get under the cap, but Rodgers will count $40 million against the cap in dead money um, unless something is done with this contract. Can you foresee a situation where the Packers almost help even pay some of that to give the Jets a break just to make the trade happen? I know I've seen that thrown around, um, but, I, you know, it's not a, it's not a, to me, it's not a case of cash. You know, the Jets have cash, you know, coming out of their ears with Woody Johnson. I mean, my gosh, he's a, you know, he's one of the heirs of the Johnson and Johnson company. And really? So, Almost yeah. a teaspoon. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's loaded. So cash doesn't matter. Cap matters. Um, and the Jets are pretty tight against the cap, but uh, an agent I know who has a player on the Jets said that they're starting to restructure players. Now, he said they would have done that anyways, even if Rodgers wasn't coming. So I guess what we have to look at is how far, you know, how much are they going to do? Um, because they got to get you know, they, they only need 15 million, 15.8 million to fit Rodgers under the cap this year. And that's not much. And they can find a way to lessen that once, once the trade is made. So um, I don't really, I don't think the Packers have to do it. I'm sure the Jets will try to get them to do it. And I think the Packers will say, no way, we can't do it. You know, we're, we're just a poor small town little team. We can't afford it, you know. Even though they make print money at Lambeau Field, um, we've seen the printing machines. It just comes flies off. Right? <laughs> right off the machine. You need to find this. Uh, thing. Yeah. Um, so that that'll be probably part of the talks. I think the Packers aren't going to hang up, get hung up on this very long. I think they need to move on, and the Jets may know that. And that may cause a little haggling at the table. But the Jets have to get this done. They absolutely have to get this done. They've, they've put the expectation out there that he's coming. They've sent their owner and coach oh. and offensive coordinator and, who knows, equipment manager, you know, I don't know, um, everybody. And they've gone all out. So – it would look really bad if they if they didn't pull Rogers out of there. So, how that's affecting um, negotiations between the two teams, I don't know. But I, I would love to be a um, have a bug on that phone between <laughs> Gutekunst and um, Joe Douglas, the Jets GM. You don't already have a bug in there? Uh, no, my. Um, it's okay. You here, have to tell your secrets here. Yeah, I tried that wire up a cockroach and, and get it, leave it in our office and hope it would make its way up there. But it didn't, it didn't make it. Don't, don't spill all your secrets. Yeah. Um, it, as you said, the Jets almost have to get this done now. But if you are the Jets, is is all of this worth it for a quarterback that's going to be 40 and has openly contemplated retirement over and over? Is one year possibly worth it? I think it is. It really depends on what they give up. Um, but the Jets have a really good defense. They have good wide receivers. Um, they have a really good coach. Uh, they have the offensive coordinator that will make it so that Rodgers just, you know, s steps off the plane and right into the offense. You know, it's not going to be any change for him hardly at all. Um, the one thing they don't have on paper is the offensive line that the Packers have. And that sort of made me wonder whether they would include Bakhtiari in the deal at, and whether Rodgers would ask for it and say, look, uh, you know, just like you did Randall Cobb, I'll come. He, but you got to sign Randall Cobb or trade for Randall Cobb. And would he say to the Jets, well, I need you to trade for David Bakhtiari too. I mean, think about it. Then he gets his left tackle, his best friend or best friend on the team 
Right. And uh, he gets his backside protection, which the Jets don't have. And they're up and running. And for the Packers, it's not a bad deal because they get his contract off the books. They gain about $5 million in cap room if they trade him. And then they just cross their fingers that um, Josh Nyman can play left tackle, which I think he can. But they also maybe wind up with two first, you know, with the 13th pick in the draft to go along with the 15th. And then all of a sudden they can draft a first round tackle too. If they, let's play hypothetical here for a second. If they do get the 13th pick from the Jets, do they package that with the 15th and try to, like, is, and I know this is kind of getting into prospects a little bit, but is there anybody like worth, is there a position of need so much that it, it would be worth packaging those and moving up into the top 10? Not, not unless they could get like uh, Will Anderson, um, you know, the Alabama defensive end who's just. It's probably a know, top five guy. Yeah. And I mean, at this point, I don't think you're going to gamble too highly on Jalen Carter because of what's gone on there with his arrest. Or, um, and I, it's such a good draft um, for depth that I don't think they need to sacrifice anything. Boy, if you can get, so just think about it. If they have two first round picks, that would mark two years in a row they're drafting, um, getting two guys out of the first round. Yeah. And if you even go back to um, the, um, was it Jair Alexander and Savage? I forgot. No, it was before. I think that was the year. Anyway, they, they've had multiple picks, and I think that would work out well for them. In fact, it probably would be even better if they traded back with one of those picks because mm-hmm. the draft's really strong in the second and third rounds. And, you know, they could wind up getting the tight end they want in the second round and maybe a pass rusher or maybe take a pass rusher or, or that first-round pick just becomes a wild card. It's whoever yeah. – the best player is and we saw there's you know there's some really good athletes who are going to be available when the Packers pick with 15 now if they have 13 I I think there could be some people who are want that pick I don't know It, it would make things very interesting let's just say that having those both of those picks right there and there's a Georgia linebacker who can run a 4-3 and we know that's catnip to Brian Gutekunst be real yeah. tempting to sit there and try to take Nolan Smith. Yeah, I mean, really, they've they've focused on um, height, weight, speed so much in the last three drafts that you kind of wonder about that. But um, it, it sounds good on paper. You know, the the gamble is that Bakhtiari would have come back and let's say he would have played all seventeen games. Yeah, and he still. I thought when he played last year, I thought he was very, very good. Right. The the dice you're rolling is whether he can stay healthy. We we sort of got distracted there with the draft. I was I didn't know what word I was looking for. Distracted, um, went off, off on, track. A, on a detour. Yeah. We got detoured there. Let's get back to Rogers here for a minute. Um, it, if you are the Packers and you're looking at the Jets' roster and your needs, is there anything that maybe you're asking for off their roster as well in that trade? I don't think so because – so maybe a young receiver, you know, maybe like Denzel Mims, um, but you just don't want to take on cap space. So, like, you're not going to take on Corey Davis, who's got a $10 million cap um, number you're not getting their top players. You're not getting Garrett Wilson. You're not getting Quinn and Williams. Um, it, it's just, you're not getting Brees Hall. You, you're you not getting those players. So you just should probably hope uh, on getting the draft picks and clearing as much space as you can, because that's kind of what they need to do. I mean, even Gudukun said, it's kind of time to pay the piper for all the contracts they've pushed off and um, probably just ridding themselves of some cap would be a good thing for them right this year. 
let's say this all goes down and, and Rodgers is traded to the Jets um, and this becomes Jordan Love's team. You've talked about the need to probably have like a veteran guy behind him. Um, are you bringing in an experienced vet or are you bringing in like a journeyman? I would say a journeyman. I would say someone who you feel would help uh, Jordan Love, but also, you know, hey, if you have to get in a game and you need to win a game, um, you got to have it. Like, I keep saying Taylor Heineke, I, I really like him. I thought he's such, he's a perfect backup, you know, mm -hmm. the kind of guy who can come in and run for a hundred yards or do whatever it takes. To Will the team to win. <laughs> yeah. He's just not, you just don't want to count on him taking you to the Super Bowl. But um, I, I, I think that type of a guy would be fine. I mean, you're putting everything in your basket with Jordan Love, just like you were with Rodgers. It, it's, it's no different. It's not like they've had guys who could win Super Bowls behind Rodgers. You just need someone who can, um, who's played the game and can help Jordan Love a little bit. Technically, Doug Peterson did win a Super Bowl, but he was behind Favre, right? And it was as a coach. That was my that was my qualifier there. Um, I was trying to be cute because he won a Super Bowl as a coach. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't think they're going to sign him. But... <laughs> Keep up with it. Keep up with my joke here. I have no idea what you're talking about. Anyway, because <laughs> you said that they didn't have a guy behind Rodgers that could win a Super Bowl, but Doug I, Doug Peterson was behind Favre, wasn't he? Yes, yes, we're okay. not behind Rogers. Listen, it was really funny in my head. Yeah, yeah. It sounded, like, uh, it sounded like um, the structure was there, but um, <laughs> it just didn't come together. At the no, end. if you have to explain the joke, it's not funny. Yeah. I, I tried. Um, I've been there, done that. <laughs> let's kind of go back to Indianapolis here for a second. Just in your conversations with with different people, albeit, you know, whether the Packers or, or a different team, what was the sense in the readiness of Jordan Love? I think they love his potential, and I think they feel like he was not rattled when he had to play. Um, he faced the, Philadelphia? Yeah, in Philadelphia, but also Kansas City. Remember – that was an amazing experience for him because right. they go to Kansas city two years ago and Kansas city just blitzes him with all get out, you know, and, and Lafleur's not ready for it. So Jordan love is just like, okay, I got to deal with that. And, you know, at the end he, he drove him for a touchdown and, and he just didn't, I didn't think he really panicked or anything. And then you see him against Philadelphia and he comes in there and, you know, bam, bam, he's, he's moving the team down the field. Um, I even thought in Minnesota in the first game, you know, when he came in at the end, he moved the team. Now, that, that was probably more um, playing against prevent, right. but he wasn't really playing against prevent against the Eagles. They even blitzed him on the one where he hit Christian Watson across the middle for the touchdown. So I, I think, you see those kind of things and you're like, okay, well, it's probably time. And now you got to find out about them. If you are moving forward with Jordan Love, do you kind of just assume that 2023 is a transition year then at this point? No, no. I mean, I think you've, um, I think you've been working on making this a team that um, can compete regardless you know even if I, I think they thought they were going to be that last year like I think they thought they'd be a team that even if Rodgers didn't play that well they could compete for a Super Bowl it, it just didn't happen and so now they know you know some of the weaknesses they have um, they're still got they got a year older on defense with some of those younger players um, their special teams started to come around. Uh, 
They got a chance to be pretty good on the offensive line. They got both their running backs coming back. They got Christian Watson more established. I mean, they're going to have to add some other wide receivers, but um, they they have the ability to um, you know bring all three parts of the game together. I think when you're with Rodgers, and it's not really a fault of his, it's a product of how good he's been. Everything is surrounded around your offense. And so you're not playing really field position games. You're playing to win with your offense, which is what they've done since he was a starter in 2008. And it's the right move. You got a quarterback that good, you, you build around him and you try to outscore everybody. But um, with Jordan Love, I don't think that's going to be the case. And I think they'll play more of a, um, a complete complete games. I think they'll rely on all three facets of the game to win as opposed to laying everything on the quarterback. Is that maybe what they needed to do to win? I mean, you look at like San Francisco. They did last year. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. San Francisco, that's their model. I, I would say Kansas City is more towards like building everything around Patrick Mahomes. But then you look at some of these other teams and, and I guess it just depends on what you're what your roster gives you. But I mean, that being said, you said they needed to add some more. What do you go after either in free agency or the draft to sort of shore up those holes for Jordan Love? Um, I I think you got to get another wide receiver, um, an established one. And if you can get another fairly, you know, first or second day pick out of it, um, I would do that too. If you find a guy you really like, keep adding. And, um, you know, if you can add some kind of a veteran wide receiver and maybe a tight end, and you're going to draft a tight end, I think that's a given, maybe two, uh, all of a sudden you got some parts around him. I, to me, the thing I would do more than anything if I were good at Quince, make sure that offensive line is, mm-hmm. is, is stocked. I mean, have backup after backup so they don't go through all the things they had to go through last year when Bakhtiari and Elton Jenkins were coming back from knee injuries. And, yeah. um, you know, they had other injuries. It, they need they need that offensive line to be um, set and moving day one of training camp. What did he tell us in Indianapolis? You need 13 guys. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and – he thought the offensive line played really well at the end. I I thought they played pretty well. Um, not I, like, I don't think they could have competed with San Francisco's defensive line at that point, but for what they had to do, um, they were pretty good. They just need to reach like a, another level. And with Elton Jenkins healthy, we'll see who's at left tackle. If they could, you know, if they could get a really good right tackle, um, someone in the draft, you know, that that they really like, that that would go a long way. But they still have, you know, they have Caleb Jones and they like Sean Ryan and and they like Rasheed Walker. Some of those guys have to come forward and be at least really quality backups. They've got something in Zach Tom. Yes, they have something in Zach Tom. I'm not sure what. That's going to be an interesting one because – that might I be a good Rudy problem Quince, to have, not knowing what you've got there. Yeah, I, I thought Gutekunst said what I've always thought was, I'd like to see that guy at center. And Gutekunst said, you know, that he thinks that's his best position. Maybe, you know, maybe he's better than Josh Myers. Maybe that's a competition you're going to have to um, initiate in camp. So I, I'd be interested to see that. If they, if, Tom moves to center. Can Myers play somewhere else? I don't think so. Um, you just you have know, to play then, really well backup. Yeah, you get a second round pick as a backup, or you try to trade him somewhere. Um, but if Zach Tom, you know, it's sort of like Elton Jenkins. I still think Elton Jenkins' best position would be center, but he's very valuable on that left side. Yeah. So. Um, you know, they have a center. I I would like to see Zach Tom at center. I think it would be really interesting. Okay, Spoon, before we wrap up here, let me just get your final thoughts then. 
Mm -hmm. New Leap Year starts on March 15th. Beware the Ides of March. So it's a warning we've had from the beginning of time. Is Aaron Rodgers on the Packers roster on March 15th? Um, no. No, I think he's a Jet. I think that's going to happen. Do you want to put an over-under on when it happens? you want to place your bets? No, I, I, I don't. I think it's really unpredictable. I think it's – well, you know what? I'm not going to say – I'm not going to lay all my uh, money on the Jets just yet. Oh, now you're changing your answer. Because <laughs> now, because I'm, I'm not sure if Rodgers wants to play in New York. I think that's one option for him, but I wouldn't rule out some of the other places. The Dolphins um, have been an intriguing possibility ever since you said it. They are. They are. And, you know, you got a bunch of other teams just sitting back knowing that the Jets kind of have are willing to do the most and they don't want to get in a bidding war with them. So, you know, maybe if you're Las Vegas and he decides he doesn't want to play for the Jets, you know, all of a sudden he's taken away some of the Packers bargaining power and, you know, maybe the price goes down for him to go to Las Vegas or Miami or whatever. So um, I, I don't think it's over from that standpoint. I, I, I'm not going to commit to anything. I know a lot of people are saying, oh, yeah, it's, it's going to happen. I, I just don't know. While we're talking about quarterback needy teams, I just want to get your opinion on this because you've been around the NFL for a long time. Have you ever seen anything like this with so many teams publicly pulling out of the Lamar Jackson possibility yeah that's pretty crazy why would you even do that i mean he's what 26 why would you not why would you not at least explore it um could you do a uh you know a a sign and trade or i don't know i that there's some collusion going on i don't know how else you could what else you could think about but um i know giving up two first round picks is a lot but Man, he's a pretty good quarterback. Yeah, he is. Well, we'll continue to get answers on Lamar Jackson. Not that it affects the Packers. Um, I don't know. Maybe he's in Green Bay next year. Maybe that's your your yeah, right. <laughs> what, what crazier things have happened. And continue to get answers on the Aaron Rodgers saga. As we said, New League year is March 15th. I, I imagine we'll have some sort of answer by then at the very latest Whatever happens, we will continue to have coverage for you here on PackersNews.com. Make sure to keep an eye out for all of Tom's pieces. He's been ahead of the curve on a lot of this. So keep an eye out for whatever he has to say there. And um, then the next big thing is the owner's meeting at the end of the month, right? Mm -hmm. We will have Pete. Well, free agency will start too. Yeah. Yeah. And we will have Pete right at the owner's meeting. Free agency starts after March 15th as well. As I said, we'll have you covered completely on PackersNews.com, so stay tuned there. Spoon, thank you as always. This has been the Green 19 Podcast from JSO Live at PackersNews.com. Green 19!